until the word of God that you have heard, until it leaves your human spirit with all of the character of God. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. If that word has not left your human spirit with all of the character of God, if it has not given your mind the culture of truth, you should not cease to meditate it. You should not cease to hear it. And do not forget this. Until faith has achieved its highest objective, you must not stop to feed your faith. And to feed your faith, you will have to keep hearing the truth again and again. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear it, the more you understand it. The more you understand it, the more the faith that's born on your inside. There are different types of faith. There is weak faith and there is strong faith. There is little faith and there is great faith. You see, the kind of faith you exhibit depends on your understanding of the formation at your disposal. A truth that hasn't given the culture of truth to your mind should not be archived, should not be kept aside. So, this is what you have to learn to do right now. Learn to crave a truth that you heard that has not shaped your spirit. Learn to crave it. The Bible tells us, Blessed are those that hunger first, for they shall be filled. How much God satisfies you depends on how much you hunger for the truth. So, never set the truth aside because you've heard it before. There are those who have read the Bible many times. They keep reading it. You know why? The word of God is that manner that's ever fresh. It never grows stale. And you see, the amount of revelation you have of the word of God is what determines the kind of life you live. We have been called to rest. Our rest is tied to our revelation until a truth has formed the revelation. A revelation that has become a consciousness. You don't stop to listen to it. And so I challenge you to learn the word. You, you are supposed to hear the word of God, a message again and again until you start living out the message. Because we become what we hear through practice. As if we have not become what we've heard, then we have to go back to hear it again until we become what we hear. And so let's, let's, let's become hungry for a truth until it forms the character of the spirit until it brings us to an environment of truth where we can't live without it. Make that a habit for yourself. It's a choice you have to make. It's a choice you have to make. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so here it is. I am conscious of the covenant to make the mass when I need to Eh? and show commitment when I have to. Though it's a covenant, you are required to ask for the commitment. In the Old Testament, God called Moses. You have to remember all of these were after the Abrahamic covenant. Every covenant from Abraham, every covenant from Abraham has its roots in the Abrahamic covenant. Christ is the fulfillment, the extension and fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant. Davidic covenant, an extension of the Abrahamic covenant. Mosaic covenant, an extension. So, because after, after Abraham, what you have is the Mosaic covenant. Then you have the Davidic covenant. And then you have the new covenant. It's not about this, what you are doing. You are, you are carrying face. Uh, I don't want to laugh. Please don't laugh. Don't laugh. Be there. Don't smile. You'll be closing doors by your own self. You'll be shutting doors. Be shutting doors. Say, what if it's not funny to me? You know why God is not answering your prayers? Because God is not funny to you. God is not funny. Angels can't stand you. No angels ever enjoy laughter from you. They, stay, they, they avoid you. It's frowny. 
this frowning new creation. <laughs> but for some of us, we have infectious laughter. <laughs> that the angels are happy around us. Happy people. I remember when angels, Isaiah, Joseph, Thomas, and James, when they came for a meeting up there, every time I spoke, they were smiling. Four of them. They were at the back of the auditorium. I told you guys. Every time I spoke, four of them were all smiling. And the host of angels that were with chariots and horses were downstairs. And they were a crowd I couldn't number. But the four of them were upstairs. And this was the thing. every time I spoke, they would smile. And I was smiling, but I was talking, I was looking at them, I was talking, I was looking at them, and they were all smiling. Imagine that there was always... They would start wondering what was going on. But they were all smiling. Till I finished. And I said one thing that I, I knew cracked them up. I said they feel, they feel privileged to even be in this meeting, and I pointed at them, and they smiled. And I, and I loved the fact that I could make angels smile. Four of them. Handsome looking guys. Or smiles. But their skin was able to tell that it was angels. Because the first time the angels visited me, all I, God made me see was their skin. They were with me. They, they, and guess what they came to do? To wake me to go to bed. A first encounter with angels where their skin was not human, just tapped me to go to bed. When I opened my eyes, I saw, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Clean, guys. Smile. Life is not that serious. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Are you still here? Yes, I want you guys to please Enjoy the rest of the service. And we'll be done in no time. Enjoy the rest of the service. Understand covenant. So this one is more of understanding covenant, even though it's living in the covenant. Because we have to understand first. So we'll carry this topic to the next covenant program. So to this one is understanding covenant and then actions in covenant. Amen. Amen. So quickly, I have, because I've said a lot of things about covenant. No duress, no this and all that. Then back to um, Abraham. Verse 4, whatever is through verse 4. One, two, read.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So did you see what happened? Pharaoh took the wife and God smote him, plagued him. And he said, why didn't you tell me? That means God told Pharaoh, that's a man's wife. And you touched her and plagued him. And this was after Pharaoh had given Abraham gift because of Sarah. <laughs> and so, but you know they were actually siblings. You know they were related, Abraham and Sarah. They have siblings. Same father, different mother. As I said, my father's daughter but not of my mother. Not of my mother. So is that not incest? Marrying siblings. Not today. Not today. Hallelujah. But hey, why did God do all that to, um, to, to Pharaoh? To let Abraham know of the person that has called you. That I, the guy who called you, this is who he is. When he calls you into a relationship, this is how he becomes committed. So he becomes committed. Have you seen what I've done to Pharaoh? Then watch it. By the time they got to chapter 15, he said, let's enter a covenant. Are you there? Yes, so, we have two more chapters to read about this quickly. And we'll run off Genesis chapter 15. From verse 1. Quickly, everybody. It's important in the covenant. One, two, read. Pause. Do you, did you see that? Have you ever read what this means? I'm a shield means I'm your defense. I'm your defense. Don't let anything bother you, okay? Yeah, God, I'm a solution. Yeah, it's true. When God puts you over a people, he gives you all that is required and more to take care of their needs. That's the truth. The jury, when God told Moses to give Israel food, <laughs> Moses said, where did I give birth to this one? <laughs> where will I get food from? They're asking me to feed them. <laughs> Is this not what I told you from the beginning? <laughs> See, now you ask me to feed these people. And God said, faithless Moses, calm down. Calm down. I said, feed them. You should just say, okay, I will feed them. Then let me be your provision. Too faithless, Moses. You know, Moses had a very had um, issue with paranoia. Was a highly paranoid person. Moses, being a stammerer, didn't even help at all. <laughs> Calling me, <laughs> as I struck that rock when he should speak. Ilanga, <laughs> pro. <laughs> and you know, writers are writing books about the fact that Moses didn't enter the promised land because God was angry with him. That's general truth. That's general truth. Moses had done something worse than that. And God didn't beat him. That's general truth. Because Cana was meant to be where they go to fight. They were going to be fighting in Cana to be displacing the people there to enter. You think God wanted Moses to get involved in all that fight? If God was angry with Moses as they, as they have taught us and killed him like they've taught us, who, who came to talk to Jesus on the mountaintop? Moses. Who? Moses and Elijah. God should be angry enough for Moses not to see Christ. Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't want to tell you guys some things to make you think God is partial. 
you will not enter this land. <laughs> there was no need, sir. At his age, want to be sharpening knife and fight. No, there was no need. Go and die. He would have killed him. He said, go and die. And the guy climbed the mountain. Went to the back of the mountain. Laid down. And left. Nobody to date. Did you read your Bible? Nobody ever saw his dead body. No way he was buried. Bible only tells us that he was buried by angels. Who else has angels buried in creation? <laughs> but let's leave that one. There are things I, I can't tell you now that one day you will hear and you will love the dimensions of the spirit. But let's just learn this. He said, Abraham, I'm your defense. Go back to it. He said, I am your shield. I want you guys to understand scripture. He said, I am your shield. He said, I am thy exceeding great reward. Do you know what that means? Because we've read it many times. He says, I'm your defense. Oh, I love this one. And thy exceeding great reward. I love this one. That exceeding, look at it, folks. He said, I am your exceeding great reward. Exceeding great reward. It means I am your immeasurable substance and provision. In other words, I am, I am yours for having. Therefore, there should be no thought of insufficiency in your heart. I am yours for having. I belong to you. I am yours for having. Oh, oh, Shiba Baba Baba Baba. Thank you, Lord. I am yours for having. So you should not accommodate any thought of lack. Catch me here quickly. So it says, I am your defense and I am your substance in exceeding measure. All right? But watch it, watch it, everybody. Look up, look up, look up, look up. I am your substance in exceeding measure. However, I am not permitted to be yours right now because of the law in existence, in creation. Adam's sin drove me out. Adam's sin drove me out of creation, out of the earth. I'm sure you are aware of that. When Adam sinned, God never came back to the garden. So Adam sinned, drove me out. But there's an alternative I can use to come back. It's called covenant. Covenant is an overriding relationship. It overrides constraints. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's an overriding relationship. It overrides constraints. Constraints. You, have you, heard that? you know the word, right? C-O-N-S-T-R-A-I-N-T-S. Constraints. It overrides them. I can use an example that we like a man and a woman. The woman says, you can never, never touch me. And you like her, you like her body, you like everything. So you can never touch me. And then he says, okay, I will marry you. And now you marry her and all the boundaries are off. Suddenly, all the boundaries are off. Why? Because of covenant. In that covenant, she is no longer her own and you are no longer your own. She now owns you and you now own her. So where are the constraints? you are falling apart. That's covenant. 
That's why it's higher than just agreement or treaty. For example, in treaties, for example, like you have the NATO, NATO is a treaty, you know, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, right? It's a treaty. But that treaty is not a covenant, all right? That's why citizens of member countries will still need visa to cross into countries. You can't say because you are a NATO member, you can just leave, you can go to America. You need visa. That's why covenant is higher. Are you getting it now? Because you made a, how many of you sign agreement with your landlord and then you can enter his house and eat whatever you like? <laughs> and say, today I want to spend time with landlord's wife. <laughs> but you had an agreement. Yes, so agreement is not a covenant. Okay? Yes, People have to correct that. Agreement is not a covenant. It's just agreement. Covenant is different. Covenant is different. In covenant, there are no oh my goodness. There are no limits to ownership. There are no limits to ownership in covenant. It is 100%. It's 100% ownership. It's not 50-50. If you ever read in your Bible, in Romans chapter 1, it says, for we are joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs means owners in equal measure. Co-heirs means owners by divided measure. Joint heirs means owners by what? Owners by what? Co air means owners by what? Divided measure. So, as co air, you say, I have 30% share, you have 60%. We are co heirs of the company. But when we are joint heirs, I have 100, you have 100. So, we are not co heirs with Jesus, we are joint heirs with Jesus. Did you hear that? Yes, say, I'm an heir of God. I'm an heir of God. Say, I'm an heir of God. I'm an heir of God. A joint heir, a joint heir. With, Christ. with Christ. He says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. Say, I'm an heir of God. I'm an heir of God. Do you know who an heir is? An heir is one with the entitlement to the will. An heir is one with the entitlement to the will. Brothers and sisters, don't you feel bad to be an heir of God? and be broke, and be sick, don't you feel bad? I'm an heir of God. Where are the proofs? Hello? Where are the proofs that you're an heir of God? Show me the proof. Show me the proof that you're an heir of God. Can I see your proofs of airship? You don't have any? I'm an heir of God. <sighs> you know how airs speak? Do you know how Jesus spoke as an heir of God? I'm sure you are aware Jesus was an heir of God, right? You know how he spoke? He would say, all things that the Father has are mine. Are mine. And then he will say, Therefore have I said to you 
the Holy Ghost will take up mine and show you. Because they have all been delivered to me. They are mine. They are mine. At the beginning of this meeting, I, I, I led you guys to read um, Revelations 4, 11, uh, and um, a couple of other scriptures. If you just read um, 9, you know, and um, 7 Corinthians 5, 18, talking about all things are of God. And then, when you were done, what I didn't write to read for you was what Paul said as a conclusion to those premises. Paul said, therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. How did all things become yours? By covenant. By covenant. Quickly. Living in a covenant relationship. Quickly take note of something. How to enjoy covenant relationship. How to enjoy covenant relationship. Number one, by understanding covenant. Number one, by understanding covenant. Are you there? Understanding covenant. Number two. Through active consciousness of the covenant. Through active consciousness of the covenant. About three. By making demands. By making demands. Are you there? By making demands of the partner or partners in the covenant. Number four, number four, by faithfully discharging your own commitment in the covenant. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Number four, by faithfully discharging your own commitment in the covenant. <clears throat> by faithfully discharging your own commitment in the covenant. Can you guys look at those four things? How to what? Number one, Number two. Number three. Partners to the covenant. Partners in the covenant. Whichever. And number four. That's it. Isn't that simple? Because you can't keep making demands when you are not faithful, when you are not showing your commitment. Because it's, it's supposed to be a give and take kind of, not just a, a take, 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 take. Life is not that serious. So, relax. Let out the steam. The steam that has been building up since, let it out. Life is not, that, is not that serious. Let it out. You will marry. You will have children. 
you will have cars, you will travel around the world, you will own houses, you will win souls, you will count with God. So relax. It's not that serious. Amen. Amen. So let this thing out. So bring out in out. Now I see some of you who are just going back and forth. <laughs> When you are not lizard, you don't know how much that helps. Breathe in, out. You feel good. Just feel good. It's not that serious. It's very simple. How this ga 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 long long face, choleric temperament. It's not working. It's not working. Enjoy life. Yes, sir. Enjoy life. <laughs> this looking, it's very simple. I'm telling you, it's very simple. You're just burdened. I told you about the, the melancholy air that people carry. Where you are, you are pensively sad even when there's no cause. Just sad. And the devil's like it. Because the devil can oppress you through an atmosphere. We don't know that. Can they oppress you through an atmosphere? It's called the atmosphere influence. You're just feeling heavy. Feeling body. Feeling like you're being pressed down. Shaking together. Running over with sadness. And you wonder why. It's not that serious. Life is for living. Life is for enjoying. Trusting God who giveth us all things richly to enjoy. Enjoy your life. It is not consistent with the nature of a kingdom to coexist with non-subjects. The kingdom preaches, conquering, and influencing to bring to subjection. Kingdom is the sphere where God's influence is most palpable and tangible. Just giving the Lord our offerings, our tithes, our first fruits, and our seeds. Go ahead. Is you worthy of our praise? To you are hearts for praise. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God. Lord, we honor you with our offerings for promotion. For the God plan of life. Lord, we enter into the God plan of life with our offerings, our tithes, our seeds, and all. And we continually walk in that plane. And it shall be said of us, Happy art thou, O TGN, who is in such a case where there's no breaking in or breaking out, where there's no complaint in our streets. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, Father. And we receive the harvest in all that we give. In hundredfold to your praise and glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the saints said, Amen. And good life has said,
when you're born into this world, you are working to the physical realm. As you train your mind and get enlightened, you are mentally awakened. So there's physical awakening, mental awakening. I said that there is a third one, which is the higher, is spiritual awakening. That's when you are awakened to the reality of God, angels, and all. When man comes into this world, he's awakened to the physical world, physical awakening. Then when his mind is trained, he becomes mentally awakened. But he's still dead. Not dead physically, but dead to the reality of God. Because when the scripture talked about death, it refers to what you are insensitive to. What you are not alive to. By virtue of Adam's sin, man died. Not physical death, spiritually. By spiritual death, it means we're cut off from the life of God and we became unresponsive to the realities of God. When the life came, we were awakened. Not physically awakened, not mentally awakened. We were awakened spiritually. We were awakened to the realities of angels of God and the spiritual realm. Suddenly, man knows that God is a reality. God is true. God is no longer just an idea. The light makes God real in your heart. The awakening that that light brought is called light. You can have the life that receives the glow of God right now. And suddenly you find that the things you once called foolishness are actually realities are great verities. So what do I do to have that life? What do I do to give God a room in my life? Become his child. How do I become the child of God? It is by declaring this word of prayer with me right now. Say after me right now. Oh Lord God, I believe that you love me and that you offered your son Jesus Christ in my stead who was offered for my offenses and was raised back to life for my justification today I ask for the Lord Jesus to be my savior I ask for the remission of sins of my soul I ask for eternal life of my spirit and by faith I receive the remission of sins in my soul. I receive eternal life from my spirit and I declare I am born again. I declare the life of God is coming to my spirit. I declare I now belong in the family of God. And so I ask you, Father, go and repeat after me, come and place your mark of ownership on me by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, today I become a member of the family of God. I ask for your presence into my life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. I have eternal life and I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that prayer, open your mouth right now and pray with me in, in the spirit because you have just been baptized of the Holy Ghost right now. So how do I know? Psalms 81 verse 10, it says, open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. So the rest of you pray with me just in 60 seconds. practice. <laughs> Ibragina Sakradi Meredose Frokitaba Rabashi Kabela Endo Cobra Irakata Labroko Rabakashi Beredidi Proso Freke Dele Manda Krista Rabababa Bokosu in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the spirit of dominion. 
the spirit of lordship. By the Holy Ghost, I trample and crush to pieces. This day, all my worries, all my cares, all my sorrows, all my troubles, all my limitations, I declare. Where these are bounded, grace did much more abound. By the abundance of your grace, I rule over them from today. They shall no longer have dominion over me. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I, subdue them. I subdue them. I rule over them. them. For as it is written, yes. the, Egyptians, the Egyptians you see today, you, see today. You, shall see them. you shall see them no more. No more. I, declare, I declare these challenges, these, challenges, these, worries, these worries, these cares. These troubles that I see today in the name of Jesus, I shall see them no more. Speak in other tongues. Go ahead. You have dominion over them by the Holy Ghost. Dominion over sin. Dominion over poverty. Dominion over fear. Dominion over lack. Dominion over anxiety. Dominion over suicidal thought. Dominion over same sex desires. Dominion over fornication. Dominion over immorality. Dominion over infertility. Dominion. Dominion. By the Holy Ghost. Lava Ponte. Lake Bon Santo. Luba Haya. Luba Haya. Monto Cobo Shaha. Lee Havana Minto Cobo. In a parcel and manto. In a proper Cobo. Ipa Yatata. Tons of every day, tons of every day. You have a heart, you have a heart. Zivo Cambregizo, when the Prophet of Paris and the Game and Drigo, broke off with Gava Rieselamind, if a guy is so me and the Gava, Julie Apodes, Jube Gamina, Missy for Reepataka, Zofia Tida, Zofia Tisa, Pale of Sophia. Godfrey Ostovino, Liga Prickis Devo Minda Christi, Vri Azomindo Opro Cabisa, Zaki da Ipro Cotogrisa La Mantri, Bisa Fatana, Bisa Fatana, Gure Conge, Ego Pela, Lotto Patagahi, Zai Pacanino Epacata, Adabro Coco, Alati Pandrima, Alati Bogoko. Adibo separatis, Korabada. We have the rule over them. Bless the God who has given us the victory. By the victory of Christ, I decree we crush the pieces. We have the rule. We have the dominion. We have the rule, the influence, the authority, the power over these limitations, over these troubles, these challenges. We look for them. We find them no more. By the Holy Ghost, through the abundance of grace, we subdued in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I would advise you to hold a triumphant amen when I say that. In the name of Jesus. Oh, this is giving reality to expectations, to hard desires. So say after me, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask and I receive, I possess, I have ownership of these desires 
of these expectations why it is called today. By the Holy Ghost, I declare as it is written, all things are yours. Therefore, I take ownership of these, of these. Today, I declare these expectations have become my reality in Jesus' name. Speak another tongue. So to the lays of Babi at the re and the grass of a Maliko propays the eyes gummet. Broke a pila and madalo as to freedom. You repent the best if a dab got deal. Jabba light at the pole. I mean the glassila. He lit a pole. I die the days of days of poor for Tata. He can't even stop or pack the devil. Look his eyes down the under me. But tired of that, we need the cargo. Lock ground in the Pelago. Lock the city of the Pono. In the Mingo of the Lee of the Dava. Oh, Jamie of the Tail. Mock of the Java of the Spear. Zero of the Yapto. Mock of the Red Grassy. Lock of the Pepper as a Pondo Oman. Miss the Pali Grand Pond of the South and the Pondo of the Pia. Don't salida, don't salida from the grave. Do the palapis, do the palapis. No talk of the bread 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 of Ali Yoko, you repent the crack, 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 you repent the you repent the crack, 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 you Boko dia, Tumbra, Tumbra, Lord of the Visato, Pitanda, Pita Visa, Lord of the Door, Tobo Kidia, Lobri Casato, for your dinner, come the Dabi, Sekavis of the Kama, Lord of the Paras Day, the Cobriti Dabi, Lord of the Pitan, Pitan, Lord of the Door, Pita, Pita, Shuki Tundo, the Visa, Lobri Pah, Tumbrita, Lobri Pah. In the name of Jesus, 